All right, folks. So I've been toying around with the idea of putting up a vertical antenna for 10 meters. And what I was going to do today is just do a little bit of modeling to kind of understand what that may or may not look like. And we're going to use a tool called MMANA Mamana dash gal G A L. It's a free tool that you can get. There's a paid version as well, but it's a pretty easy tool to use to model antennas. So today we're going to take a look at a quarter wave vertical and a five eighths wave vertical and talk a little bit about the pros and cons of each. So I have MMANA gal open here and uh, you can open it up after you download it. There'll be a link below and you can play along. So let's go ahead and get started. If you need fabrication services, look no further than PCBWay.com. At PCBWay.com, they can help you with PCB board designs, layouts, and even assembly services. They also have services for CNC machining and 3D printing. And they have a store where you can buy components and parts for your project. Getting a quote from PCBWay.com is easy. Just click on the InstaQuote menu option. Here you can fill out all the information required to get a quote for your project. PCBWay.com has great customer service. Check out their support portal. Okay, so what we have here is the Mamanagal basic interface. And at the top, if you notice, we have four tabs, geometry, view, calculate, and far field plots. We're gonna use all of these. We're gonna go through all of these. Uh, if you take a look at the view tab, you can see here we have an X axis, a Y axis, and a Z axis. Z is our vertical axis. And I can click down and I can rotate this to get a different view or look of things. I can also zoom in or out. I'm going to start on the geometry tab. Now there's a couple of different ways that you can design your antenna. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a wire here. And because this is a vertical antenna for 10 meters and I'm doing a quarter wave vertical, it's 2.5 meters. So I just enter that in and I hit enter. Now it fills out the um, radius in millimeters of our wire. It's got 0.8, that's fine, and it is a single segment. Now if I go over to view, you can see my antenna here. You can see it's just a vertical antenna and I can kind of rotate it and look around. What I need to do is I need to add a source and that's gonna be our feed point. So I'm gonna go right click and then move add source to beginning of wire. And now you can see there is a little circle down there. And that looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do now is click on the Calculate tab. Oop, let's go back to Geometry. I forgot. Since this is for 10 meter, I need to go ahead and I can set my frequency. And I'm just going to pick 28200. But because I like to do FT8, I'm going to put 074. And then I hit Enter. Now I can type the name of the antenna in here if I want. But uh, I'm not going to do that yet. So what I'm going to do now is go to the Calculate tab. And you can see my frequency persisted and carried over. The first thing I'm going to look at is ground setup. And you can do free space, perfect ground, or real ground. Clicking this ground setup button, I can change the dielectric conductor and stuff like that. Um, you can get this off of the internet for your area if that is something that's important to you. But uh, we're just going to go with the defaults. Now, I'm going to turn off the radial boundary system. And I can add the number of radials and the radius of wires here. But just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to turn that off. So this is a quarter wave vertical, no ground. I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to have zero height because this is a ground uh, mounted vertical. And for material, I'm going to hit this down and I can pick different things here. Uh, we're just going to pick copper wire because it's typically what I use. Now what I can do is I can hit this start button and it runs through a algorithm. And here's our frequency, here's our ohmic real resistance, here's our imaginary resistance of uh, negative 22.8 ohms. And that gives us an SWR at 50 ohms impedance of 2 uh, to 1. And that's good, but that's not as good as I want. And if we take a look at the gain over here, I can see that uh, we are negative uh, 0.31. So it's less gain than a dipole. Uh, or I'm sorry, from an isotropic radiator, DBD is for dipole. And so let's let's just go ahead and take a look at our ground setup and turn on the eight radials, hit OK. We'll run this again. And then you can see our SWR didn't change, but we got better gain. And I actually have a video where I go through the continuous process of adding radials to see uh, gain get better. But I just wanted to show that difference here so folks get an idea of how it works. 
So we're going to leave that here for now, uh, knowing that we want to have a little bit of a better uh, SWR than uh, 2.0. What I want to do is click on our far field plots and then here you can see on the left hand side a view if I was looking down and you can see a vertical antenna. Uh, they say it radiates equally as bad in all directions. And then on the right hand side you can see a slice of a segment if you're looking at the antenna from the side standing on the ground. And you can use the tool to see your different takeoff angles. Um, and you can see where you have more gain uh, versus having less gain. Now for DX, people say you want to be somewhere between 5 and 10% takeoff angle. And so for us, that would be at 170 degrees on this side, 10 degrees on the other side. And our gain compared to our best gain is negative 2.4 uh, dBi. So that's pretty interesting. Actually, that's just uh, you can take a look at uh, 3D far field plots here and then you can get an idea of what your radiation pattern looks like. Now what I want to do is I want to go back to the Calculate tab and I'm going to hit this Optimization button here. And when I do that, I get different options for optimizing my antenna design. And you have gain, front to back ratio, elevation, uh, impedance, SWR, match, and current. And I'm actually more concerned about uh, SWR and matching. So I'm going to highlight those and then down here, I'm going to click this and pick wire and I'm going to change this to Z2, which is the wire uh, that we have identified as our vertical element. And then I'm just going to hit start and it's asking me to save the opt optimization log. I don't need to do that. I'm going to hit no, but you can see after running the optimization, our SWR dropped to 1.38, which is a lot better. And here we have it 0.52. So one of the things I can do is click on this plots button down here and I can come over to SWR, click on Resonance, and I can find out where my antenna is performing at its best. And it looks that it's around 27.915, which is not the uh, frequency that I'm interested in. So that means that I need to take a look at or consider changing the length of my antenna again or doing more optimization. Uh, we're not going to worry about it too much. And what we're going to do is, once again, take a look at our far field plot, which is right here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go file, and then I'm going to save my far fields. And then we're just going to call this test 25, because it's a 25 um, or one quarter wave. And I'm going to hit save. Now, what I'm going to do is go over to geometry and I'm going to leave my frequency the same, but I want to take a look at a 5 8 wave uh, antenna. So if you take 5 and you divide it by 8, you get 6.25. And so that would be 6.25 meters. So I'm going to change my wire length to 6.25. And then I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to hit enter. And then I'm going to go uh, over to view and you can see the adjustment here. I'm going to go to calculate and then I'm going to run this again. And when I run it again, I get better gain. So we're at 1.4, but my SWR is not where I want that to be. So there's a couple of things that we can do there, but uh, I do want to take a quick look and see the far field plot. And you can see that it is uh, different shaped than what we had before. Uh, one of the things that I can do, and I really like this about this particular tool, is I can go into, let's see where it was, compare under tools. And then I can load a file, we'll load the test that we did earlier. And then I'm going to hit open. And then I can see the differences between the far field plots and radiation patterns. So you can see that we have more gain on the left hand chart omnidirectionally. And then you can see on the right hand side of the chart that we have a stronger lower takeoff angle with the 5 8 antenna. And the lower the takeoff angle, the more obtuse your reflect, refraction is off of the ionosphere, which means that your signal bounces further. And that's a big reason why people like vertical antennas, besides the advantage of space limitations. But uh, the lower the takeoff angle, uh, the better, the better or more distance that you get. Now you may want to change your antenna design to propagate differently because maybe you're looking to have like an NVIS, a near vertical incident sky wave antenna for closer contacts, or maybe you want your lobes to be a little bit higher because you're looking at uh, maybe making a contact across the United States. 
but uh, you may want a lower ta takeoff angle as well. So that's all up to you based off of your design requirements and considerations. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to exit out of here and then let's take a look uh, at our calculate tab. Now under tools, there's an option called HF components. And what you can do here is you can look at adding coils, uh, LC matches, line matches, stubs, all kinds of things to change your antenna propagation or your, your antenna impedance in SWR. What I like about this is, is that it gives you a recommendation for an LC L network that you can put into your at your feeder line. Here on the left hand side, you see feeder, so that's coming from your your um, your radio or your load. And then you would put this at the end of your transmission line is what I would recommend at your antenna feed point. And it gives you the value for the um, components that you would use to build your matching network. Um, this, is a, this is a capacitor in parallel. So you can see here the capacitor uh, shunts or shorts out your center conductor to your shield. You can put the capacitor in series and then you can use an inductor as the shunt. It's really your choice and uh, both of those should work fine. Okay, so now we're back at the calculate field and I'm going to come down here and I'm going to hit the optimization again and we're going to we're going to run this one more time and I'm going to leave these values to the same values that we had before where we're going to optimize on Z2 and we're going to optimize for SWR or match. I can actually turn my impedance up too. Let's let's just do that and, and what these bars do these sliding bars is adjust the importance of these values when doing the calculations. So let me hit start, run through this, save optimization log. Uh, no, we don't need the log file. And so what we can see here is, is that our gain has jumped to 4.9 and our uh, SWR has dropped down to 1.8, which is fantastic. So what I want to do, let's take a quick look at our far field plots. And here you can see the shape of our field has changed dramatically. Let's go back up and do a compare to the original uh, quarter wave antenna that we were looking at. And then you can see we have better gain in all directions. So I think the question now may be, well, what's different? Well, one of the things is, is that's including the matching network that we picked. And if I come over here and I go into geometry, it changed the length of my antenna to 7.92, which is larger than five eighths wave. Anyhow, I just wanted to kind of put this together to show how you can make some of those comparisons. And I wanted to make, uh, make this video to help educate myself as to around what I want to do in terms of a vertical antenna. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below. I appreciate everybody watching. Thank you.